that's not Preacher Cow up there. I already realized that. But uh, they're out in Mansfield, Ohio tonight, him and Brian, uh, in a revival up there. So I'm pinch hitting tonight for us, and my family's out here singing. So uh, it's the night of the Richard lineage, I guess. But uh, we're, we're thankful to be in God's house. Are you thankful to be in the Lord's house on a Wednesday night? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to turn over to my Grandpa Howard for the singing. Let's turn to page 95. 95, kneel at the cross. I might be a little bit hot there, I don't know. Am I? Sounds like I am. Men the mic.
show him I can't stop now if I try Oh, it gets sweeter As the days go by It gets sweeter As the moments fly His love is richer about the children of Israel, Moses leading them out of Egypt, and, and uh, that's always amazed me how hard the Pharaoh's heart was, and then it amazed me even more when they came out of Egypt, and the first thing went wrong, they began to whine and complain, and I thought, surely, Lord, don't let me do that, and when I do, just forgive me and look over me, but uh, I'm glad that over 67 years ago, I got saved, and the Lord's kept me all them years. And uh, I, I don't have anything to complain about tonight. I just fell in love with him, and I'm still in love with him.
Praise the Lord. We uh, have prayer meeting for this reason, don't we? If you have a burden, if you have a need, I'd, I think I'd uh, take care of that on the altar tonight before we close out. But we thank, thank those for minding the Spirit. There's a lot of people who need prayer. A lot of people need miracles. You hear of things that gone on in the area. And um, who better to lay at the feet of than Jesus? So we... Uh, we thank the Lord tonight, and um, I'm out of Ezekiel 37 for my text tonight, Ezekiel 37, and um, before I get going here, um, I know uh, Candy had asked her, Candy's mom's pastor, uh, Donald Curtis, needs a touch from the Lord and needs prayer, so um, uh, definitely make sure to call on the Lord and mention Donald Curtis in your prayers and get and um, lift him up to the Lord in prayer for healing tonight. I know they greatly appreciate that um, and continue to be in prayer, of course, for Cal and Brian in their camp meeting um, that the Lord would saturate their services with His Spirit. Ezekiel 37. We'll only read one verse. Ezekiel 37, verse 9. I know it's, you hear preachers say this sometimes, and it's true. I can say with the Lord as my witness, hand on the Bible, whatever you want, this is not what I myself wanted to preach tonight. So uh, anybody who's been a preacher knows what that feels like, so you just ask the Lord to help us for a few minutes. Ezekiel 37, 9, then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Before I get into anything else, I just want to pause a minute and ask the Lord, Send the wind. Lord, I pray that you'd send the wind. Send the wind to us individually. Send the wind to us as a church. Send the wind to our schools. Send the wind to our jobs. Send the wind to those in need of healing. Lord, send the wind. I think uh, many of us here remember a few weeks ago the... Uh, craziest windstorm I've ever personally sat through, around here at least, and I know some others have seen or been around tornadoes in the past, I know some have been around this area, but in my lifetime, I don't recall such a powerful windstorm that struck, uh, and, and I, I kid you not, that it was so powerful, uh, some of the, in this I may need to talk to a construction contractor or something, but the drywall in one of my rooms was shaking. It, the wind was so powerful that night. You talk about keeping a man on edge. And it had a, I don't know, it decided to redecorate some things on the outside for me too and move around some things, but it was a powerful windstorm. Now we know from the Word of God that the Holy Spirit is often referenced and compared to in the four elements of the world, earth, fire, water, and air. We've heard the Holy Ghost preach. What's cows sometimes say? Tell folks, come on out to Rubyville, it's on fire, watch us burn. You heard that one? I've heard it preached here, let it rain, let it rain. Send the Holy Spirit, let it rain. And Well, I like... You see, there's some things about wind, too, that is just put so simple to tell us what the Holy Spirit can do. If the wind just blows strong enough, the wind can move what we cannot move. The wind can do things that we cannot do ourselves. If you just get in strong enough gusts of wind, 
Praise the Lord. So one more time, I'll ask you, Lord, send the wind. I see throughout the text, and for the sake of time, I won't read them all, but the wind has the power to do several things mentioned in the Word of God. In Jeremiah 49, 36, and upon Elam I will bring the four winds. That's what, there it is again, the four winds, and we'll get to that at some point tonight, but I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. I see here that the wind has the power to scatter. To scatter what? Scatter your enemies. That's a big deal for people going through something tonight. In Daniel 11, verse 4, and when he is talking about the lawless one antichrist in the time to come, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. So I see it has not only the power to scatter, but the wind has the power to conquer. Do you have an enemy that needs conquered in your life? Anybody here got a need in their lives tonight? Anybody got a problem in their body? Anybody need a bill paid? Anybody have a problem in their personal life and you have tried to do all that you can do? You've tried to take control. You've tried to do, put your best foot forward, use every mental calorie that you can spare to try and fix your need and it ain't fixed. Didn't I tell you that the wind can do things that you and I cannot do? The wind has a power to conquer. And in Ezekiel 37, 9, the wind has a power to revive. We just read it as our text. And if I could think of something that I would desperately love to see, and we've seen a little bit of it lately around the country, is for the church of God to be revived. What's that mean? That means to be lifeless and then brought back to life. Now you and I can talk to uh, whoever we want to. We can put out as, many out as many Facebook posts out there and try and reach out as many people and it might not move somebody. But if the wind blows, the wind had the power in Ezekiel 37, 9 to revive the valley of dry bones and breathe life into the flesh and give them life once again. Don't you want to see that? I got a little boy back there growing up, and what do I hear all the time? Oh, preacher, this world's going nowhere but down. Preacher, morals are getting worse. Nobody has a moral compass anymore. They're lawless. They call evil good and good evil. We got all these crazy folks running the country and running these companies, and we got all sorts of crazy and sin and families being broken up and people dying of addiction and people dying of problems in body and yet I sit here today and I need something to come up I need the world to be revived I want my son to grow up in a world where people know the Lord and know how to call on God and know how to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth so one more time I'll say Lord send the wind send the wind Now we saw in several of the texts in Ezekiel 9, he says, come from the four winds, O breath. And I know there's, there's several things that could be referenced there, but the four winds, the east wind, the west wind, the north wind, the south wind. And each one is referenced in the Bible, some mentioned more than others. But we're, I'm just going to briefly look at each one of those. If we want the wind sent, we're liable to receive any of them. So we might as well know the difference. The east wind is found in Exodus 10, 13. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Jeremiah mentions it in chapter 18, verse 17. I will scatter them as with an east wind 
before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Now, there's other references to the east wind. It's one of the more, uh, out of the four, it's, it's one of the more commonly referenced winds. But the east wind almost unanimously references judgment in your Bible. People might not like the east wind. The east wind is a hard wind. The east wind is reserved for those to whom either rebel against the Lord and have judgment as their fate or for the children of God where the Lord needs to chasten his child. The east wind blows and signifies judgment. But I, at the same time, if we want the wind and we pray, Lord, send your wind, sometimes it might be an east wind. Sometimes if we want the Holy Spirit to come and to saturate our lives and to move and to, and to convict our lost family and our lost friends and we need him to do a work in our lives, he just might send the east wind. Why would he send the east wind? Because sometimes we just need to be set straight. That, that, again, I, the law, and a long time ago, and I've said this in many of my sermons lately, but, and I may have said this before, and I apologize if I'm repetitive, but when I had my son coming up on two years almost, have mercy, I can't believe that. But uh, when I had my son not too long into that, the Lord and the Spirit spoke to me and he said, take good notes in your mind on this dynamic with your son. Take good notes because you'll learn a lot, more about, a lot more about your and I's dynamic and your and I's relationship, him as our father, us as his children. Now, he's cute, isn't he? Oh, Lawson's cute. I think, I, I'm his dad, I know, but I think he's a cute boy. He's loud and he's obnoxious sometimes, but he's cute. He makes us laugh. He makes us want to cry sometimes, but he's cute. And, um, you know, he's almost two years old, but the terrible twos have struck about four or five months early. Some of y'all back there, you know, you hear him, you've heard him in the nursery. The looks, where are the candy? You know the looks that he gives some of you all back there. And it's hard for me to do what's necessary sometimes, but as a father, and something that's missing it seems like sometimes, but inevitably, even now, I have to step in when he is acting out and try and teach him something. Now, I know he's young, but he's learning things every day. He's smart enough. He picks up on it. Don't, oh, Kyle and I debate this. He picks up on it, I promise you. But if I don't step in with some tough love every now and then, Am I preaching? If I don't step in as the authoritative figure. Now, this little kid, now, youngins think, I was there once, and, you know, youngins think they know it all. He probably thinks he knows it all and what little world that he has anyway, and he thinks he knows what's right, and he thinks he knows what he wants. And if somebody who knows better doesn't come in and put him on the right path to correct him when he's wrong... If somebody doesn't step in and do and blow the east wind a little boy and do some kids in this country some good, if some mommy and daddies would just blow a little east wind their kids' way sometimes. It'd do even some teenagers some good. If the school teachers just blew a little, it'd do some bosses some good with, with new, new hires who think they know it all and can do it all their way. And some people who are entitled and some people who think they know more than they do. And here I say again, Lord, send the wind. Send the east wind when I stray off the straight and narrow way. Lord, correct me. Lord, do what you see is necessary. Correct me where I'm wrong. Straighten me up and do what's right. Lord, Lord, I thank you for the east wind. Amen. 
For every east wind, although, there is a west wind. And if my research is correct, I only found one account in the Bible in which the west wind was specifically mentioned. In Exodus 10, verse 19. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. They remain not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. So for every gust of east wind there of judgment, there is a west wind. Of mercy. Praise the Lord for the west wind. Oh my goodness. If you could just sit and think for, I, I mean, legit, I'm not just talking about checking a box and feeling pious in your religion. I'm talking about sitting and genuinely thinking where in the world you might be if the Lord didn't blow a gust of west wind your way and get you out of the mess that you were in. He might have given you a judgment of east wind, but oh, don't you, aren't you thankful that it doesn't stop there at judgment? Yes, I know that the Lord is just and he actually executes judgment as he sees fit but aren't you glad in the book of Psalm 103 he says as the Lord or as a father pitieth his child so the Lord pities them that fear him I can tell you every time I've ever had to step in as the father and, and set my son straight and make him and correct him of his wrongdoing I can tell you this the judgment doesn't stay there's always mercy at the end of judgment and I praise the Lord that he executed a gust of west wind on me when I called out to him and I've been in a mess and I've been in a problem all out of my own doing I'm the one that messed up I'm the one that did wrong I'm the one that strayed away and went contrary to what God wanted but praise the Lord he blew a gust of west wind my way and had mercy on me praise the Lord yes one more time I say praise the Lord for the west wind Now let's just pause real, real quick on this west wind. Who is our standard of who we should aspire to be like as children of the Lord? I think it's none other than Jesus himself, is it not? I love my pastors and I think they tell you, they're not the standard, I'm not the standard, nobody in here is the standard. No matter how good any of us are, nobody with flesh and blood is the standard with who we should aspire to be like. It's oftentimes I hear somebody say, well, I don't know if this and this is correct. And they say, well, somebody there who goes to church does it. So I think, that's not the standard. Read the word of God. See what the standard is in his word. See what the Lord Jesus said about it. Now, if the Spirit being, you know, part of the Trinity, whole, uh, Father, Son, Spirit, you know, we can obviously connect those a little bit. And if the Spirit has a gust of west wind, if the Spirit is merciful, who are we to be anything different? Sometimes people in their life, they wonder sometimes why things aren't moving the way that they thought it would go. Sometimes we wonder, oh God, we prayed and we've, we, we've searched and we've tried and nothing's working with whatever that you're facing. Sometimes the Lord sees it fit for it to be like that and he has a greater plan. But sometimes we hinder the movement of his spirit because we do not exercise what the spirit would have us to do. When people do you wrong, do you talk to them again? Do you love on them even when it's hard to love on them? What's Cal say? If I had a body, I'd have a good funeral. 
guess we're at that point, aren't we? So what happens now when I, 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 I've come across it far too often? The older I get, the more you see people have problems, and the more you, you have your own problems, the more you got to self-reflect. But I can tell you this. If we are to be, if Jesus is the standard in which we're to live, who are we to try and not only tr consciously come up short, and, but we try and spiritually justify coming up short. You don't know what they did to me, preacher. You don't know who, you don't know the problems I've went through. You don't know. Oh, I'm telling you what, you have no idea the pain that somebody's caused me. You don't know what they said. You don't know the look they gave me. You don't know what they did. And here I say, Lord, send the wind. If we want the wind at Rubyville, if we want the wind in our life, then we are to be merciful to people who need mercy. Who in the world do we think we are if we're not merciful when Jesus was merciful to us? Amen. Thank the Lord for the west wind. I'm, I'm going to get on now. I won't keep you forever. We also have the north wind. Proverbs 25 23, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. Now, the way that reads, you might think it means drive, takes the wind away from where you're at. But in the comparison that Solomon makes, it actually means it's the, the rain is derived on the north wind. And that's also enforced in Ezekiel 1.4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came from the north with a great cloud. And I'm no Tony Cavalier, Brandon Butcher, or whoever does the weather these days, but when you have a gust of north wind, a lot of our cold fronts come from a wind towards the north, northwest area, and they come and they cla it clashes with the Warmer parts, and that's how sometimes we get... When that windstorm hit a few weeks ago, it's because a massive cold front moved in with wind from the north. It brings cold. It brings rain. It brings unpleasant conditions. And if we pray to the Lord, send the, send the wind. Lord, send the wind. You might get the east wind of judgment. You, got, you might get a west wind of mercy. But you might get a north wind that brings rain. You might get a north wind that brings rain. Now, sometimes there are problems that we wander into out of our own silliness and our, our own immaturity and our own uh, uh, methodology of doing what we think is right when it's really not right. And we get ourselves into some problems. But sometimes, as you know and has been preached on many times, the Lord will send you a problem that is ordained by him that you may learn how to get closer to the Lord through that wind, through that north wind. Sometimes... It's awfully hard and it's awfully uncomfortable and it's awfully pleasant, but it's a necessity. If we want to pray to the Lord to send the wind, well, sometimes he might send Rubyville a north wind or he might send us individually a north wind and, when, and, and, and it might bring rain and I, it might bring unpleasant environment, but how much more beautiful landscape if you have wind from the north come and you have the rain fall and you have it, it, it saturate the dry ground. I'm here to tell you, if we never have a rain around here, it'd look awfully ugly in a hurry if we never had rain that hit our lives, if we never had a problem in our lives come up that was ordained by God, you and I would be dry. We wouldn't have life. We wouldn't have color. We wouldn't have creativity to serve the Lord. We wouldn't have a bolster in our step to serve God. We need the north wind. We need problems sometimes. Yes, I said I'm not praying for it. I'm not hoping that, that it hits anybody here. But sometimes people miss the mark of how close they can get to God when it's raining in their life. 
Sometimes people think that the Lord's being unfair or they, they blame the Lord for a problem or they blame the Lord for a trial. And sometimes you just have to open your mind up to the fact of what the Lord could be doing in your life through the wind and through the rain. How many times have we heard people who were just more or less robotic in their walk with the Lord and they, they, it's not that they were evil, but they weren't getting to the next level with the Lord and the Lord sent a north wind. How many testimonies have we heard in here? I've heard several over the years. I can name a few just by my memory of people that, that, that developed such a closeness with the Lord because the north wind came and rained. If you want to say, send the wind, Lord, send your spirit. To just be ready. Sometimes he might rock your world and blow the shingles off your roof in order to get your attention. In order, but the, the, it's a necessity sometimes if we're stagnant in our growth. Well, after all, if you go out there and look at a landscape and you look at, at plants growing, they're not going to grow very tall if they don't get any rain, are they? Are we not supposed to get closer to God each and every day? Are we not supposed to try, Lord, if our, if our growth is stagnant? Stunted and we're not going anywhere with the Lord, I say thank God when he sends the north wind and brings a gust of rain to water us when we're dry. But for every north wind, there's a south wind. If the north wind brings rain, What's the south wind bring? In Luke 12, 55, I see it referenced. And what Jesus talking to the Pharisees and said, And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. I like the south wind. I love, you know, it, it varies in different parts of the world, and I, but in Judea and in you know, the south wind in our part of the world, it blows from the warmer part of the world and makes it warm, doesn't it? I've seen some commentators refer to it as, they infer that it's signal, uh, symbolizing fire, or symbolizing revival, and maybe it does, and we won't get on to all that, but, you know, I think of a south wind, I think of summertime. I think of vacation time. I sure could use that after the windstorm we had the other day and the first day of spring and it's 27 degrees in the morning. Had to go thaw my car for about 10 minutes before I go. I say, bring on the south wind. <laughs> but the Lord, rest assured, knows when we need a south wind. And you know, it oftentimes comes right after the north wind. And it'll drive out the cold of the north wind. You know what that tells me? If, if there's a west wind for every east wind, if there's mercy for every bit of judgment from God, what's that tell you? For every north wind of cold and rain, there's a south wind of summertime coming. Sometimes when we got a hard trial in our life, you know what you ought to do? Say, Lord, I, I know it's hard, but I can't wait for the south wind to blow. Lord, I know it's trouble, and Lord, I know it's problems, and I'm cold, and I'm comfortable, and I'm ready to go. But, oh, I thank the Lord that when he sends a north wind, if you just hold on, if you just put your head down, and you trust in the Lord, the south wind will eventually blow, and your north wind problems will be gone. Oh, I rejoice for the Lord sending the south wind. The thing I love about the wind the most When it blew the other day, like I said, it, it or the other day, the other week, it, it did a lot of damage. Anybody have any clean up the next day? Anybody have any power outages the next day? I guess nobody had a power outage. So we did. But uh, what they, when I look on the app at AP, they tell me, that the power is out because a tree fell somewhere on 
a power source. Now, the thing that people hate about wind is it wrecks things on the outside, gives you a job to do the next day, and it makes things inconvenient. You want to know why people run from the Spirit sometimes? Because it makes things inconvenient. He makes things inconvenient. He might ask you to do something you don't want to, he might tell you to go somewhere you don't want to go. He, I sure didn't plan on going to preach anywhere, but he asked me to go preach. Has he ever asked you to do something you don't want to do? Has he ever moved you to do something you don't want to go do? And you know what would happen? If the wind didn't blow, the tree would stay right where it is. Now, you and I can try and move things outside and not have, any effect, not have any ability to move it. I can sit there with any kind of tree that's rooted in the ground and look like, a, like I don't know my, my, any kind of sense trying to move that tree on my own power and on my own accord. And you know what I got to thinking and how that relates to the wind and what the power of a wind can do? Any of us got lost loved ones in here? Anybody got lost co-workers? Lost friends, lost... People know people... Some, everyone in here knows someone that's lost. Have you ever tried to talk to them about their lost condition? Have you ever tried to talk... Parents, have you tried to talk to your child that's lost? A lot of times I hear the same thing. They won't let me say anything to them about it, preacher. As soon as I bring it up, they tell me to quit talking. They tell me they don't want to hear about it. I've had that happen. And you and I, we still try to do what we can do. We try to witness. We try to tell them about the Lord, and they don't want to hear it. We can't move them. So why say, Lord, send the wind? Well, if I tried to move that tree on my own power, what would happen? I'd look silly and I'd never be able to move it. So why do we ask the Lord to send the wind? Because the wind, if you have a strong enough gust of wind, whatever direction that it comes, he can move who we cannot move. So what's that mean? I could try all my life and nobody ever, nobody ever listened to a word I say and nobody ever give me the time of day. But if the Holy Ghost comes and if the Holy Ghost moves and you get a strong enough gust of wind who once said they would never get saved will suddenly reconsider their walk with the Lord and will suddenly reconsider if they'll get saved so Lord I pray would you send the wind send the wind if you want the Holy Spirit to come you might get any of these winds But we can't pick which ones we want. We can't pick just the west and south wind and think that's going to be all right with our lives. Sometimes we have to face the east and north wind. But nonetheless, I ask the Lord, send the wind. Send your spirit. Now be advised if you pray that. The wind could blow a little stronger than you're expecting. And the wind could rearrange some things that you had perfectly laid out. I had everything laid out on my deck how I wanted and the wind, the wind rearranged it for me. Threw it all over the place. So when you pray that prayer, don't pray it lightly. Send the wind. Send the wind. If you have a lost loved one, Lord, send the wind. If you need healing in your body, send the wind. If you have something in your life that needs conquered, send the wind. I'll ask my grandpa to come and get a song. Now, I 
I know that uh, I know some of this isn't all too it's great big revelation or something you ain't ever heard before or anything but sometimes people just need the spirit to move on something in their life do you need the spirit to move we've seen people come up to the altar already and pray because they needed the spirit to move We've seen people injured this week. Terrifying news we've seen across the county and area. People need the Spirit to move. They need healed, and, and we thank the Lord for professionals, but we need the Spirit to move. I know people and friends that I need the Spirit to move and to melt their heart of stone. Words always fall short and they don't do it. But if the spirit moves, if we can just get the wind to blow and visit them, maybe he'll move what we can't. So if anybody needs the spirit to move in anything tonight, as they sing, and you want, if any, for those who are able and stand, we'll invite everybody to come. If you need the spirit to move in something in your life. Page 13. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me.
praying anybody has a need tonight. Orders are open. Ask the Spirit to move. Ask the Spirit to help. in prayer for one another and the needs. I know um, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of activity and, and, and people needing a lot of help and things I've seen online. I don't know the whole story, but I know a local student needs prayer, immense prayer, and you just call on the Lord to do what we can't do. How about that? And uh, let's be in prayer for the family as well. And thank you to each one who was sensitive to the spirit tonight and thank you to my family for the wonderful singing and uh, I know the one thing I did want to mention they hadn't told me but I know the Easter cave I think starts this weekend doesn't it yeah Easter cave uh, is it Friday or Saturday both days so sorry three to nine three to nine so go out and, ex- and uh, celebrate Easter uh, early and uh, go, go out to the White Gravel Mines for the Easter Cave. I've not been able to go to that, and I definitely want to be able to go to that, so I hope to see many of you there. Uh, and, and I know that little guy in the pajamas back there loved the Christmas Cave, so I know he'll probably love the Easter Cave too. Amen. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer over here, and once we're done, you can consider yourself dismissed. Oh. 